You know how people are when they get spiritually proud. They belong to some kind of a church group or an occult group and say, we are the ones who have, of course, the right teaching. We're the in-group, we are the elect, and everybody else outside is uh, really off the track. But then comes along someone who one-ups them by saying, well, in our circles, we're very tolerant, and we accept all religions and all ways as leading to the one. But what they're doing is they're playing the game called, we are more tolerant than you are. You see, and in this way, the egocentric being is always in his own trap. So Buddha saw that all his yoga exercises and ascetic disciplines had just been ways of trying to get himself out of the trap in order to save his own skin, in order to find peace for himself. And he realized that that is an impossible thing to do because the motivation ruins the project. He found out then, you see, that there was no trap to get out of except himself. Trap and trapped are one. And when you understand that, there isn't any trap left. I'm going to explain that, of course, more carefully. So, as a result of this experience, he formulated what he calls the Dharma. That is a Sanskrit word for method. You will get a certain confusion when you read books on Buddhism, because they switch between Sanskrit and Pali words. The earliest Buddhist scriptures that we know of are written in the Pali language, and Pali is a softened form of Sanskrit. So that, for example, whereas the doctrine of the Buddha is called in Sanskrit the Dharma, but in Pali, and in many books of Buddhism, you'll find the Buddha's doctrine described as the Dhamma. And so in the same way, Karma, in Sanskrit, becomes in Pali, Kama. Buddha remains the same. The Dharma, then, is the method. Now, the method of Buddhism, and this is absolutely important to remember, is dialectic. That is to say, it doesn't teach a doctrine you cannot find anywhere what Buddhism teaches, as you can find out what Christianity or Judaism or Islam teaches. Because all Buddhism is a discourse, and what most people suppose to be its teachings are only the opening stages of the dialogue. So, the concern of Buddha as a young man, the problem he wanted to solve, was the problem of human suffering. And so, he formulated his teaching in a very easy way to remember. Now, all those Buddhist scriptures are full of what you might call mnemonic tricks, numbering things in such a way that they're easy to remember. And so, he proposed, he summed up his teaching in the form of what are called the Four Noble Truths. And the first one, which because it was his main concern, was the truth about Dukkha. Dukkha, suffering. The next thing that comes up, the second of the Noble Truths, is about the cause of suffering. And this in Sanskrit is called Trishna. Trishna is related to our word thirst. It's very often translated desire. That will do. Better perhaps is craving, clinging, 
grasping, or even, to use our modern psychological word, blocking. When, for example, somebody is blocked and dithers and hesitates and doesn't know what to do, he is, in the strictest Buddhist sense, attached. He's stuck. But a Buddha can't be stuck. He cannot be phased. He always flows, just as water always flows, even if you dam it. The river just keeps on getting higher and higher and higher until it flows over the dam. It's unstoppable. Now, Buddha said then, Dukkha comes from Trishna. You all suffer because you cling to the world. And you don't recognize that the world is Anitya and Anatman. So then, try, if you can, not to grasp. Well, do you see that that immediately poses a problem? Because the student who has started off this dialogue with the Buddha <laughs> then makes various efforts to give up desire. Upon which he very rapidly discovers that he is desiring not to desire. And he takes that back to the teacher who says, well, well, well. He said, of course, you are desiring not to desire, and that's, of course, excessive. All I want you to do is to give up desiring as much as you can. Don't want to go beyond the point of which you're capable. And for this reason, Buddhism is called the middle way. Not only is it the middle way between the extremes of ascetic discipline and pleasure-seeking, but it's also the middle way in a very subtle sense. Yes, don't desire to give up more desire than you can. And if you find that a problem, don't desire to be successful in giving up more desire than you can. You see what's happening? At every time he's returned to the middle way, he is moved out of an extreme situation. Now then, we'll go on. We'll cut out what happens in the pursuit. Thank mm -hmm. you.